I'm here to tell you the story of how we are saving the lives of five million people a year just by having hospital staff wash their hands. And how a small hospital program spread around the world to become a global standard. I'm here to make you care about hand washing. Can you believe it? Well, you probably should, because every one of us will be one day a hospital patient. And every day, at least half a million patients get infections in hospitals. Every year, hospital infections kill 16 million people. In the United States alone, at least 200,000 patients die of healthcare associated infection every year. The equivalent of a 747 airliner crashing every day. In developing countries, this is the largest cause of death. In developed countries like ours, this is the second largest cause of death. These are preventable deaths. Yet, no hospital, no country, no healthcare system in the world can claim to have solved the problem. However, there is a cure. A simple cure, hand hygiene. But what makes it so difficult for healthcare professionals to clean their hands? This is what we wanted to understand 20 years ago in Geneva. First, we counted all the times a nurse would have to clean his or her hands before touching a patient. This hand washing was performed using soap and water and took between one and two minutes to do properly, meaning that nurses would have to spend at least 30 minutes every working hour just washing their hands. No wonder hand washing didn't work, right? So, we propose to replace soap and water hand washing with alcohol-based hand rubbing. Alcohol work fast. Rubbing your hands takes only 10 to 15, let's say a maximum of 20 seconds, right? Once your hands are dry, they are clean and ready to act. You can make alcohol-based hand rub available at the point of patient care where it is needed, thus. We gave a pocket-sized alcohol-based hand rub dispenser to every staff in our hospital. You want it? <laughs> Simple. I figure it would work. What do you think? Did it make a difference? Of course not. Of course not. Think about cars and seat belt. Having a seat belt in a car does not mean that you will use it. Interventions over a long period of time combined to make you buckle up. Awareness raising campaigns, strict police controls, getting tickets for some of us, 
Using seat belts requires a multimodal behavior change strategy. And this is exactly what we did to promote hand hygiene in our hospital. We placed alcohol-based hand rub dispenser all over the place in the hospital. We use hospital walls to hang posters reminding good practices. We monitored staff compliance and fed back their performance on a regular basis. Over a three-year period in Geneva, infections were reduced by 50%, saving hundreds of lives and saving millions of dollars a year to our teaching hospital. In 2002, we published our results in The Lancet. In 2004, the UK converted to the Geneva model of hand hygiene promotion. In 2005, the World Health Organization got involved. Today, the campaign runs over 180 countries, covering more than 95% of the world population, from modern healthcare settings to settings with very limited resources. The campaign saves between five and eight million lives a year. But of course, this did not happen alone. Changing behavior is not that easy. Let me give you a few examples to explain resistance to change. In the United States, because alcohol is flammable, fire marshals opposed installing alcohol-based hand rub dispensers all over hospitals, pretending it would increase fire hazard. These delayed implementation two extra years in the US. Even worse, nurses' unions fearing that alcohol would damage nail polish <laughs> opposed our recommendation to prohibit false nails. False nails are recognized as bacteria reservoirs, the source of multiple infectious diseases outbreaks in hospitals. In the Muslim world, some were reluctant to apply alcohol on their hands because of the possible absorption through the skin of a substance prohibited by the Koran. A young Muslim nurse in the UK, rubbing her hands every day in the hospitals, was evicted from home by her father. We worked with the Muslim clergy in Saudi Arabia, obtained a fatwa, and today rubbing hands with alcohol during patient care is accepted by the Muslim League and widely used in Muslim countries. Respecting religious background is key to success. And so is accounting for cultural diversity. We use two major tools to promote change. The when to hand rub, your five moments for hand hygiene, and the how to hand rub, the way to do it. Those posters were translated in multiple languages. They were also adapted. Suddenly, Playmobiles in Argentina. Olaf in Germany. And Hello Kitty in Japan were promoting hand hygiene. Adapt to adopt and let people be creative. If you want people to adopt a new strategy, you need to let them adapt it. 
adapt to their resources, their beliefs, their culture. Here we are in a remote place in Africa, a little village in Ethiopia. Here is the How to Hand Rub poster, color-coded and translated into the local dialect used in the village fistula clinic. Adapt to adopt and let people be creative. Creativity is key. In 2014, in Hong Kong, this hospital created the hand sanitizing relay. What is a hand sanitizing relay? Getting as many staff as possible to rub their hands in a chain, passing the hand rub from hand to hand, person to person, in a long chain. They obtain a new Guinness World Record. <laughs> the next year, more than 30,000 hospital staff all over the world on the five continents perform hand sanitizing relays. Colleagues from Iran get a new world record. <laughs> Most importantly, in hospitals we try to beat the record Compliance with hand hygiene improved, and this is the most important. We also needed to make sure that alcohol is available all over the world at affordable cost. I once visited a remote hospital in rural Kenya. There was a nurse using alcohol on her hand, taking the hand rub from a locked wooden box. I was surprised, why such a luck? Until I understood that this very little hospital was paying more than twice the price you or I would pay for the same hand rub in Boston or Geneva. Scandaleux! <laughs> we developed a license-free hand rub, today called the WHO alcohol-based hand rub formulation. Here is my friend, Lozemi Bengali, in his very modest pharmacy in Mali, Africa, preparing the hand rub from sugarcane by products. Today, in more than 50 countries around the world, hand rub is produced from sugarcane, maize, manioc, rice, or potato. In Liberia, during the recent Ebola outbreak in West Africa, hospital pharmacists, coached by my friend Lozemi, produced the hand rub locally. Local production is feasible and cheap. It is necessary and it saves lives. Since 2014, Alcohol-based hand rub is part of the World Health Organization Essential Medicines list. As a last example of adaptation, I want to show you a video. In 2009, we launched a hand hygiene video dance which triggered hospital staff all over the whole world to develop their own video dance using the hand hygiene gesture we promoted. Have a look. I head to the sink, scrubbing those germs so they hit the street, yeah. Ian's better than those you buy Samurai. Adapt to adopt has become our motto. Clean hands, save lives. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Thank you.